Happy halfway. We are halfway through the solutions to physics GRE GR1777, number 51. A grading spectrometer can just barely resolve two wavelengths of 500 nanometers and 502 nanometers, respectively. Which of the following gives the resolving power of the spectrometer? So our resolving power is going to equal lambda over our uh, delta lambda. That's just going to equal 500 over 2 equals 250, and that is answer B. Number 52, a gas cell with an optical path length of 10 centimeters is placed in one arm of a Michelson interferometer. If the light source up for the interferometer is a laser with wavelength lambda equals 632.2 nanometers, then 100 fringes are counted as the gas cell is evacuated. What is the index of refraction of the original gas? So m lambda is going to equal 2l times the quantity n minus 1. And m lambda plus 2l equals 2l times n. So n is going to equal the quantity m lambda plus 2l, that whole quantity, divided by 2l. And we know that 0 0.1 meters equals 10 centimeters. So n is going to equal 100 times 6.32 times 10 to the minus 7 plus 2 times 0 0.1, that whole quantity, divided by 2 times 0 0.1. So do some math. And uh, we are going to get n equals 1.00032. That is answer B. 53, a microwave line has a laboratory wavelength of one micrometer. If the Hubble constant H equals about 75 kilometers per second per megaparsec, the observed wavelength for the line from a galaxy 100 megaparsecs distant is about, and we're gonna refer back to our unit chart for the micrometer and nanometer conversions. Um, so for close distances, which is going to be about anything less than two gigaparsecs and slow speeds, we're gonna get uh, z the redshift is about equal to v over c, v being the velocity. And we know that v equals ho times d, where ho is Hubble's constant. And so v equals 7.5 times 10 to the 4 times 100 equals 7.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, which, yes, is um, significantly less than the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meter per second. So z is going to equal 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2 equals 0 0.025. And so z is going to also equal lambda observed minus lambda emitted divided by lambda emitted. And lambda observed is therefore also going to equal the quantity 1 plus z times lambda emitted. And lambda observed is going to equal 1.025 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And that is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 8 meters larger than um, the emitted wavelength. And again, we're gonna convert back to nanometers. That is 25 nanometers longer. That is answer D. And I want to take you on a quick thought experiment. So we have a difference in the energy between when it was emitted and when it was um, observed. So what is the gravity felt from the redshifted photon? Do we feel the gravity from the photon when it was emitted because of the finite speed of gravity, or do we feel the gravity from the photon when it was observed when it had the lower energy? If we feel the gravity from the photon when it had the higher energy, then because of hot big bang cosmology, we should be feeling distant locations as they were in the past when they were hotter. So therefore we should be accounting for uh, the extra energy from the past because of the finite speed of gravity that we are just now feeling gravitationally from distant locations. Now if you do that, interestingly, the amount of extra energy um, because of hot big, big bang cosmology that we're feeling from distant locations, that amount of extra energy uh, equals about dark energy. If you want to check out a video I made about it, check it out right here. Um, anyway, uh, and here's a more detailed description of an abstract that I had with the American Mathematical Society. But let's not digress too much. Let's continue with solutions. Number 54. The AC circuit shown above contains an ideal rectifying diode. If the function generator supplies E of T equals VO sine W T, which of the following describes the voltage across the resistor? Well, rectifying uh, a rectifier converts AC to DC, and DC only flows in one direction. Um, so the input wave is a sine wave, 
and uh, this would alternate above and below V equals zero. But diodes block current in one direction, and only the positive V part of the sine wave persists, while the minus V part is left out. Uh, for another example, though, if an even number of diodes are given rather than just one, uh, the minus V component is converted to positive V as an answer E, but in this problem it only has one diode, so the minus V component is, ex is suppressed just as in answer B. Number 55, the Fourier series expansion of a function f of x that is periodic with period 2 pi is f of x equals, and here's the equation right here, with our constants that we're curious about, a of n and b of n. If f of x is given by the graph above, which of the following statements about the coefficients is true? So let's just look at a couple things. At zero, f of x is zero. Um, at positive pi, f of x is not zero, but then again at two pi, f of x again is zero. So um, let's again just revisit some trigonometric truths that sine of zero degrees equals zero, cosine of zero degrees equals one, and sine of n pi is going to equal zero where n equals one, two, and three. So um, let's just walk through some of these answers because we can say and we know that cosine of n pi does not equal uh, sine of n pi. So we can rule out answer E. Uh, a cosine of m pi does not equal zero for f of x. So we can again rule out more answers. And odd sine of n pi also equals zero. Um, so again, that just leaves us with answer B. It's the only solution that remains valid. And so that is our correct answer. Number 56, a sample of n molecules has the distribution of speeds shown in the figure above. Uh, P of V dV is an estimate of the number of molecules of speeds between V and V plus dV, and this number is non-zero only up to 3 VO, where VO is, a con is constant. Which of the following gives the value of A? Uh, so the area under the curve is in units of n, which is the number of particles. Since one half of all the particles are between VO and 2VO, so between here and here, uh, we have a rectangle plus two identical right triangles is the total area. So here's our rectangle and here's our two identical right triangles. Um, then the area of the rectangle is the base times the height where we know the base and the height is A. Um, the base then equals 2VO minus VO, which just equals VO. And the height must be one half p of v to make the rectangle one half of the total area since the triangles have the same base and height. So p of v is in units of n divided by v. Uh, so the height is then one half quantity n divided by vo. And that is answer b. Number 57, which of the following statements is or are true for a Maxwell-Boltzmann description of an ideal gas of atoms in equilibrium at temperature T. So number one, yes, since they are all moving in different and opposite directions, velocity has a directional component. Um, the average velocity of the atoms is zero. Uh, for two, no, uh, v of, v, uh, Vp is going to equal the square root of 2RT over M. Um, and remember, speed does not have a directional component, so it is uh, not going to have a maximum of uh, v equals zero. Um, for number three, yes, f of v is going to equal one over e to the e divided by kt, and e equals one half mv squared, so it would be zero at v equals zero. And that leaves us with answer d. Number 58, a monatomic ideal gas changes from an initial state P-I-V-I-T-I-N-I to a final state P-F-V-F-T-F-N-F where P-I is less than P-F, V-I equals V-F, T-I is less than T-F, and N-I equals N-F. Which of the following is the change in entropy of the gas? So constant volume, as the problem states, is isochoric and work equals P times the change of volume, but the change of volume equals zero. So du equals dq minus pdv, and du equals dq, and u equals q. 
So u is going to equal 3 halves nkt, where r equals nk. Uh, the change in entropy is going to equal delta s is going to equal the integral of cv, the specific heat, times dt over t. So the change in entropy is going to be the specific heat times the LAN, the natural logarithm of the temp temperature final over the temperature initial. And this integral uh, solution is because um, when you have a definite integral from the initial to the final state of dx over x, this is going to equal the natural logarithm of x final divided by x initial. Um, so in here where CV is going to equal 3 halves R from monochromatic gas, where a diatomic gas CV is going to equal 5 halves R. Um, so that is going to give us answer A. 59. Low energy electrons are accelerated between electrodes in a tube filled with a gas in the Frank Hertz apparatus represented above. A plot of current collected versus accelerating voltage is also shown. The data provide evidence for which of the following. Um, so from here we can see uh, the graph above. The measured separation of the peaks, so the 4.9 to the 9.8 to the 14.7, the measured separation of the peaks in volts, 4.9 minus 0 is 4.9, 9.8 minus 4.9 is 4.9, and then 14.7 minus 9.8 again is 4.9. Uh, this corresponds to the excitation energy of the gas uh, atoms transition, and so therefore it is answer C. Number 60, a photon of wavelength lambda is scattered from an electron through an angle theta. Which of the following correctly gives the wavelength uh, uh, lambda of the scattered photon? Lambda prime of the scattered photon. So Compton scattering, lambda final minus lambda initial equals h over m, the mass of the electron, uh, times c, the speed of light, times the quantity 1 minus cosine of theta. Um, so lambda final is going to equal lambda initial plus h over the mass of the electron times c, the speed of light, times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. And that simply is answer A. Okay, that was another set of 10. We're, uh, we're getting close to the finish line. I'll see you in the next set of videos.